Hi everyone, my name is Kat and I wanted to share with all of you today what I packed for El Camino de Santiago, also known as the Way of St. James. I specifically did the French Way, which starts in France at St. Jean, St. John P. de Port, and it ends at Santiago de Compostela, a cathedral there in Galicia on the upper left corner of Spain. So and on average, it takes about 30 to 35 days. So if you're planning your trip, you should a lot definitely at least, I would say 35 days. I did it in about 32 or 33 days. I can't remember in this moment. Um, I did it a little bit differently. So I did some shorter days and then some very long days, which I do not recommend. Um, I, Hopefully we'll be sharing that in a future video. So please subscribe if you enjoy this video. I will be doing lots of camping trips in the future. I'm actually doing one this weekend in the Sierras here in California. So I wanted to share what I learned on my journey in Spain, what I packed, um, what I ended up shipping back. So it was, I packed too much. And then some items that I actually had to pick up along the way. So this video, I don't know how long it'll take, hopefully it's not that long, but feel free to fast forward through the part where I just share what I actually ended up keeping and what I recommend every pilgrim takes with them. So the most important item you'll have is your backpack. This will be your number one piece. It needs to be absolutely comfortable. Mine was excellent. I never had back issues. The first day you feel it on your hips a little bit just because that's where the weight is. But after a day or two, I mean, it was nothing crazy. It did not hurt that much. Like it was nothing unbearable. Um, so this will be the piece that you really want to spend a lot of time on researching if you need to. But I had the Osprey 35, sorry, 34 liter, serious 34 liter. So this was great. I recommend a smaller size because you really do not want to overpack on your trip. I did initially. So you want to, the recommended is 10% of your body weight at the time. And now I'm around 136 pounds. So that would be 13.6 pounds. I left with around 17 pounds. Didn't feel extremely heavy, but you have to think of how long you're going for it. I mean, it's day in, day out, you're walking. And so it adds up, it starts to have pressure on your feet and on your knees. I had a lot of issues with my feet and maybe in part was that early on I had a heavier backpack. It was really the shoes that were my big issue, but you want a good backpack. So I did, I got this one at REI. Um, again, smaller is good. I think the 28 liter might work for some people. I really liked having the 34. I have some space in there. And after I shipped some things back to my aunt's house in Bilbao, which is in Basque country of the northern right region of Spain. Um, so I was lucky enough that I was able to get rid of some things and bring the weight down quite a bit. And those 17 pounds were without water. Weight, water weighs a tremendous amount. So um, maybe that 10% might even include the water. Mine did not. So here we go this is the backpack i chose um i really like that it had this vent system here and again i can do a longer video at some other point but this is um the backpack and actually i forgot i did take gloves and they're still in there so i did um we can start with that so gloves for me i went in april i started walking april 3rd of this year of 2023 I get cold, my hands run cold. If you want to stay warm, keeping your hands warm is key. So these were, I, these are Lululemon like running gloves. I recommend definitely like the thicker ones, like more the ski version for sure. I think in some mornings my hands were still quite cold, um, but these worked well and they were light. And as you can see, they fit in that small compartment of my, um, of my backpack. Cool. So gloves, definitely a must if, uh, if you, yeah, if you're sensitive to temperature, I think a lot of us are keeping our hands warm is clutch. So I'll start with that. Beanies, absolutely a must. Again, really important to keep the forehead warm if you want to keep your body warm. So hands, feet, and your head. I took two beanies, um, mostly 
because I didn't want the same beanie in every picture. I do not recommend that strategy. I think one beanie will do. I did end up sending one back. So I ended up sending this one back. I kept the Car Carhartt brand. Um, this worked really well. I loved it. Again, so if you're going in colder months, I highly recommend a beanie. I wore it every single day um, in the mornings and sometimes even in the evenings. Two is unnecessary. So learned my lesson. One is plenty. I ended up picking this up at St. John Pre Deport. I did not take this, but a buff. So, so perfect for um, keeping the neck warm. Again, keeping that heat inside of your body. Uh, it's just gonna make the walking a lot more comfortable if you are warm and if you're not, you know, suffering from the cold. So I did not take this initially, but I'm really glad that I did eventually. And it's just such a versatile piece to have. Um, you could wear it as a headband, you could put it on your wrist, you can wipe sweat, sweat off. I oftentimes had it around my neck to protect my neck from the sun. So I really liked having this and I had to, I picked this up. Luckily a woman who's walked plenty was like, yeah, this is a good thing to have. And I'm glad I did and highly recommend having an item just like that one. Um, in keeping with the, with temperature and controlling that. And if you care about aging gracefully at all, um, you want to protect the face and again the sun in the evening some days was intense i mean the temperature ranges quite a bit so that can make planning um what you're going to pack a little bit tricky you really do want to be prepared for all temperatures so i had this north face uh bucket hat here with the wide brim um this was nice because there were there were days that were quite windy so it was really nice to have something that obviously wasn't going to get blown away and it's light in the evenings when i didn't need it or the early mornings when i had my beanie on i just stuck this with the carabiner clip on the outside of my backpack so that was really nice really light the lighter you can go the better so absolutely a must on El Camino de Santiago. Again, temperatures just vary so much. You're gonna go from really cold to really hot, to gloomy, rainy, to really sunny. So you really wanna be prepared for all of that. Um, next, something that was really nice to have was my uh, my fanny pack. And I know in some parts of the world, they call, don't call it that. I forget what they did call it. And apparently that is not <laughs> the best name for it, but whatever. So here we go. I had, the, an, again, a Lululemon item. I really like this because even though my backpack had lots of pockets, it was nice to have my phone in here and my Pilgrim's Passport, which I'll show you guys in, next. So this was on me at all times really really convenient highly recommend to have one as well and for wandering around in the evenings once you're done walking you'll go explore the town you'll go have dinner so it's good to have everything on me at all times and that worked really well something i didn't end up taking that i wish i had so this is one item i i did buy it to take and then i ended up not in order to save room and not have such a heavy backpack but one of these foldable backpacks I thought would have been nice to keep my water bottle in there um, and just like bigger items that if I ever like if you ever shop or if you pick up snacks along the way to bring back and put in your backpack later I think that this would have been really nice to have and I did do my research I did it did see a lot of things that said to take it again I ended up just going with the fanny pack but this would have been nice I got this one on Amazon brand is for for monster backpack again really that's foldable it has a little thingy you can stick it in um, this little tiny pouch which so it's quite compact and really light I mean I could have taken it and I again wish that I would have put it next time um, another item I did not take with me initially I don't know how I missed it you 1000% need to have your own sleeping bag. A lot of places will not provide unless your budget's higher and you plan to stay at private hotels and hostels every night, which is an option a lot of times. Um, some of those places might provide blankets and sleeping bags, but if you plan to do any nights in the uh, government run hostels albergues they call them there and in most places I mean you really do want your own sleeping bag some places will provide you with like the, the small like uh, disposable linen that you put on the mattress when you arrive which is good but I didn't have this initially again I met a wonderful woman 
who's done it eight times at least and was like you absolutely need one so you will find stores along the way to pick things up at so if you do need an item and you forgot it or you just missed it for some reason like i said i completely i did a lot of research i thought i never found anything that said you need a sleeping bag i don't know how i missed that but this was absolutely essential this is quite light um the lighter the better and again being warm and comfortable so that you rest well for the next day is really important so really invest in in something um light and that keeps you warm enough this one is um ultra light comfort level it says plus 15 lip yeah so plus 15 i imagine fahrenheit so this worked really well it's uh 210 centimeters long by 75 centimeters i don't know i don't know here we go this item um so the other item that i think will be super important as far as clothing goes is having the uh, an appropriate jacket again this is the lululemon um like a fitted down jacket i really wanted something that uh fit well um so i don't like the boxy look if being vain <laughs> mostly so i really like this fitted one they do run a little bit small so it's a, a size eight but again no regrets here it kept me warm and it's super light so on the hot days right when you're not going to use your jacket you want to be able to just shove it in your backpack you need to have room first so if you have something really bulky that might not be ideal um so you can see how slim this jacket is and it was perfect i mean i'm so happy i had it it does come with a little hood which because i said i always had my beanie on i ended up taking off the hood and mailing the the hood back about i mean halfway through so i, I did have it for most of the time i didn't that wasn't something that I needed because I rather I had the buff and then I had the beanie on and the hoodie, um, the hood on it was not necessary for me. But this is something you again want to do your research on and make sure that you take something that will is light enough and that will keep you warm on the early mornings, especially if you're someone who wants to start walking earlier than most people. I think most people start between 6.30, 7.30 a.m. I always waited for the sun to come out a bit. I didn't like to start walking on my own in the morning. Not that I didn't feel safe, but I wasn't in a rush. I mean, there was only like two or three times where I left maybe by 6 a.m. and it was still a little bit dark, um, but I did wait a little bit. Um, but mornings were still cold for me in the beginning and towards the end, it just, again, varies between um the the ranges wherever you are so like if you're starting in in france depending on the time of year etc so just conditions are just always changing you want to be warm absolutely another um of course items that are really important are your socks and underwear i had <laughs> the lululemon um underwear i took three items three underwear with me and i was able to wash them daily and i can speak more on that on another video but you want underwear that are quick drying that are really comfortable and i found that three was perfect i took two pairs of smart wool socks these were a huge mistake i do not recommend huge wool socks um they uh for sure lead to lots of blisters they're not ideal so i thought that you know the warmer the better this was a horrible mistake um do not take I don't know this was not the the sock to take the lululemon high socks were fine i like these these worked well i ended up picking up some socks along the way that were you want something that's really fitted that's not going to move and i had so i ended up having two with me i shipped the wool ones back and ended up getting two pairs of this one and another one that i can't find at the moment so uh, really thin you just do not want them to slip on you you don't want them to be moving around and create more friction and sweat on your feet so you want something that keeps your feet dry um, so these were really nice I picked these up in Spain so again you will find stores along the way where if you realize that an item is not working for you you can pick something up so these say Trek ultra cool 37 to 38 I guess that's the size so these were perfect now let me back up a second the second i would say most important item so first item is your backpack second item i will say is the shoes and the third item was the jacket so let me rewind a bit i had a pair of hiking boots um 
that I bought brand new. I made a couple mistakes. I did not break them in. I did not size up. And ultimately, I boots were not the ideal shoe for this trail. So again, I did the French way, which starts in St. John P. de Port all the way to Santiago. If you start in different regions, maybe boots would be more appropriate depending on the terrain. The terrain that I encountered, boots were not necessary. I thought that I that they were <laughs> what I needed. Um, but the biggest mistake was that I did not size up and I had these huge socks. So I had to deal with so many blisters for the first couple days my feet hurt so bad the bones of my feet hurt it was insane that after I think 10 days I finally caved and bought new shoes on the way so I actually was able to find some hokas um my sister bless her heart was like you need hokas and I'm like they're so ugly I would never and I went with some boots like Vasque Vasque is the brand which normally I think are probably really good the ones I had were awful, but because I invested in them, I have, you know, paid 180. I was very like, I'm gonna make them work. I, they did not work. And partly maybe I didn't break them and I didn't size up. They could have worked, but they were just incredibly uncomfortable. I found these um, in a town, Speed Goat 5 Hoka. These were absolutely, I mean, heaven. I think anything would have been great after the experience I had with my boots. But these were great. I mean, I didn't start using them until about halfway in mileage. So I think they still have a few miles on them. I'm still using them, but these were perfect. I ended up having to size up an insane amount. So I am normally seven and a half in boots and things like that in sneakers, which I think is like a, you know, 37, 38. These are a size 40. I think in American sizes, that's probably like a nine. So you could say that I had to size up in a size and a half or two up. I think one size is probably fine. I think at that point, my feet were just so much. They still fit though. So I'm a little confused on that. But a trail is perfect. I think that the next time if I were to ever do something like that again, I would like, I would do the Hoka boot, the one that has more of the ankle support, just because I tend to roll my ankle. I like having my ankles protected, but these were great. I never rolled my ankle on the trip with these. These were excellent. So if you want something like this, a, a trail runner is the way to go on El Camino de Santiago, uh, specifically the French way. Again, all the terrains change. So if you do El Camino Norte, the north um, trail, the terrain there um, might be totally different. I don't know, I haven't done it before, but if you're doing the French way, a trail runner is excellent. Make sure you size up and definitely if you can break them in. I broke these in on the way, so that's where I ended up doing some shorter days. So I did one day when I first got them, that was 10 kilometers and my schedule was to do 28, but I, I had to do 10 because I'm like, well, they're brand new shoes. I still wanna break them in. After that, I picked up the pace and was able to do around 28 kilometers a day and they, I mean no no problems at all and as you can see they still look pretty good so um, that is the way to go okay let's do uh, clothing lots of items here I'll leave the toiletries and items like that towards the end so let's go through clothing so one item that I absolutely loved having again all my clothes is Lululemon I wanted things that were quick drying that I knew were made for sports and that I knew wouldn't cause any any issues with sweat or smell or you know I didn't want anything to smell like uh, like it didn't dry well overnight or things like that um so I loved having this button-up shirt from Lululemon I think this is actually a men's shirt that I got but this was really nice because I didn't want to have those tan lines from like t-shirts or anything like that so even on very hot days I wore this long sleeve this was nice because it's so versatile. I had it during the day again, like like I said, when it was hot, but I also would wear it in the evenings just to go out to dinner. Like if I needed like not something light, if it wasn't cold enough for me to have my jacket, I would wear this as my, um, as my top as well. So really versatile and that's what you want. You want things that you could use, whether hot, whether cold weather, things that you could layer and things like that. So really recommend having a button up if you're concerned at all with covering your arms. Again, I didn't want to have my arms exposed to so much sun every day for so long. So I was concerned with that. But if you're like, I don't care, um, and you rather just stay cool, then, then that can work. I felt that this helped me stay cool as well. So I really liked it. I really recommend having that. Another item that was really perfect was a tank top. 
So again, obviously I'm a female, so this is more for females, but hopefully guys, you can get some tips too. So this is a nice piece because I could layer it. Um, so obviously I wore it underneath my jacket, the, the long sleeve button up. Um, so it's a nice layering piece. I wear it out in the evenings as well. And it's just really light and I could wash it easily. Um, and it actually doubled as my sports bra, which I'll share more in a moment. So I ended up wearing this pretty much every single day. So this was a really nice piece to have. Um, I do wanna share, let's see, where is the sports bra? I did take a sports bra don't need a lot of support I ended up sending this back because again you want pieces that you could like if I, that works as my sports bra why would I have extra weight every item you can get rid of you're winning so I started out with a lot of stuff I started deciding okay actually I don't think I need that speaker actually I don't think I need that item and kind of each day taking things out that you really are not going to need and again, if you do realize later you need something, you can buy it along the way. They have all the brands. Like, I mean, I found the Buff out there. I found the Hoka's. Um, you'll find things that work perfectly. So I did not need a sports bra. I, I did take it with me initially. I ended up sending it back. Um, these shorts were perfect. Again, Lululemon. I loved having the pockets just for, I had the phone in there, easy access. If you're someone who likes taking pictures and at any moment, it was nice to have it. So these are their hiking brand or their hiking line. So really nice uh, fitted shorts, like biker shorts, I guess they're called. And the color was nice because it added a touch of color, but without being too, too crazy. So these were perfect. I had these, no regret. I would take these again. I'm going camping this weekend. I'm obviously gonna take those. I had a, a second pair of Lululemon shorts. These didn't have the pockets, so I do like having the pockets, but these were great too. Um, and I use these a lot. So I use them sometimes in the evenings after you know I got back from walking and wanted to go out to dinner and it was warm, I would wear these instead of those, just because they are a little bit more comfortable. Uh, but they were a nice layering piece too, which I'll share more about that in just a second. Um, for the evenings, there's if you do your research, you'll see that they recommend having like an evening outfit. So after you walk all day, you come back to the hostel, you shower, and then you might hit the town, you might go out to eat, etc. So you want us to have something you can change into that um, that is more comfortable than your hiking clothes. Some people use the same clothes, and that's one way to do it. I had this Lululemon like kind of a turtleneck t-shirt just light comfortable just a softer material i don't know what material actually it is but i really liked having just this one t-shirt to go out with in the evenings again sometimes i would do the the tank top and the long sleeve sometimes i would just do this and these shorts for example to go out in depending on the weather so this was a nice piece to have um sometimes if sometimes i would wear it during the day to hike in but rarely because again i wanted it didn't really feel that comfortable with the long sleeve over it so i would wear this more in the evenings i really liked having like one t-shirt to change into these fun pants which on the trail someone was like what's up with those funky pants i did not realize they were funky i thought they were just like cool they're free people um which i really like they're free people movement brand made in indonesia size medium so these were cool i loved having these these were, i took these initially as my pajama so i was like this will be my pajama with this free people tank top you want something comfortable again rest is really important when you're on the trail so i had this free people tank top i didn't end up using this for anything else except for sleeping so this was my tank top to sleep in and then i slept in these so this was a great item to have i my for sleeping, however, I ended up, I had, I took this by mistake, these purple pants, they're similar to the shorts, um, they're hiking Lululemon lines, which I liked. Honestly, I got so over the purple really fast, and I just found that they were unnecessary. I re Even on colder days, I liked having the shorts on better, but I quickly realized that I didn't need them. And so I did end up sending these back as well. So I sent the boots back. I sure I sent one of the beanies, the, the sports bra. I ended up sending this back. So then there were some mornings that were really cold to only have shorts on. So I would actually then use my pajama pants. 
and I would either wear these or the other ones and underneath so that when it would warm up because it's crazy just how the mornings would be extremely cold and then by midday you would be incredibly hot um, or even sometimes just by like you know two say I left at 637 by 9 a.m. it was really hot so I would take off these but these surprisingly kept me warm um, they didn't allow the the wind to come through so I didn't feel them so these again you want something that's versatile that you could use for different purposes so these were my sleeping pants but then sometimes in the mornings after especially after I sent the purple ones back I would use these as my as my pants and then just take them off and there's laundry all along the way you can wash things I can do a separate video on that but you will have access to every single day to wash your clothes and dry it. So whether it's sunny or not, if it's windy, it'll get dried. A lot of places did have um, drying, drying machines. So that's not an issue. Uh, sometimes, yeah, yeah, I would wear it and then go to sleep with it. It, it is what it is. Um, this is another piece I initially took as a layering piece. Um, it's a long sleeve, again, Lululemon. I really liked having um, the, the ability to cover like my hands. So these have like this little pocket thing here. And right now I cannot remember. I think I sent this one back. I think that I realized I just didn't need it because I had the long sleeve button up in the jacket and that was plenty for me. Um, initially I did use this piece a lot to layer. I would wear the black tank top. I would wear this over it and then the jacket, but the jacket is down. So it was perfect. And I felt like in eventually I just didn't, I think I did send it back. I don't think that I ended up needing it as much, but I did use it initially when I took it, but it's, it is a little bit heavier. And again, I realized when I was shipping things back, like less is more. Like you don't need a different outfit every night. Um, having a few pieces that I could interchange in, again, even if I'm wearing this exact same thing every day, you just, less is more. And I, I read that, I saw lots of videos like this before I left and I still took more pieces than I needed. So this was one item that I ended up not needing anymore. Um, these are other items I didn't need. I initially took some running shorts, um, Lululemon, again, not necessary because again, I already had the, the brown ones and I had the black one. So a third pair was unnecessary. Initially I was like, well, I'm over there for over 30 days. Like three p pairs feels appropriate. No, like less is more. Same thing with an additional, I had this other Lululemon t-shirt. I could have kept this one or the black one, but I like the black cottony uh, feeling more. So I sent this one back. I, I think I wore this one once and just didn't use it again. So that was another piece that didn't make the cut. Like I shared, I use these quite a bit um, in the evenings and to layer up. So that is all the clothes that I, that I took. Um, just a few pieces, like I said, about half of the items, I ended up sending them back. So again, less is more. And now let's talk a little bit about toiletries and that kind of thing, because it's a big deal. So you want a blanket, uh, not a blanket, sorry, a towel. Easy, quick, dry. I got this on Amazon. It was like a pack of three. One item is plenty. They dry really easily. Never smelled. Obviously, I washed it several times throughout, but it says quick labs, Q-I-K labs. So towel, absolutely. You will be showering. Not in the mornings. You will be showering um, in the evenings when you come back from your from your day, from your hike, whatever mileage you did. You'll probably want to get into the shower. So that is really, really important. For the showers, you absolutely, I cannot emphasize this enough. This will probably be the fourth most important item you take is a hanging shower bag. So I have this one also from Amazon, Venture 4th comes in this little baggie. I did not take that little baggie, but this is the item I took. I don't know why I have some cotton balls in here. I don't think I ever washed this since I got back, but that's okay. So it has these little zip uh, zippers here to keep. I had the soap in there, as you can tell, it's pretty gross. Another item here, I probably had, I think my toothbrush and items like that in here. And then this compartment where I had all kinds of items for um, the shower, which I'll share more in just a moment, but you want something like this because every shower you want to hook your your bag on and you want it to be a quick process in the morning as well when you are getting ready you want to go brush your you know, wash your face and brush your teeth etc it's just very convenient to have everything in one place um so that you can stay organized you're not losing your pieces throughout 
Um, so you want to have a shower hanging bag, something like this. Maybe this is a little bit too big. I think something a little bit smaller could work. And it has these side pockets here, but I just kept everything in here. So in the mornings, again, you want to pack really quickly. Um, just be, it's still dark. Like you just want to start getting on your way. You don't want to spend so much packing. I mean, initially I think it would take me 20 minutes after a, a week. I would say I was packing in probably like five or 10 minutes or less to just get everything back into your bag and on your back and then you're hitting the road. So something like this, absolutely super, super important in there. I had a uh, feeling bliss blister relief pack. So I mean this I don't think I use that much you want what you do want is this kind of uh, roll for blisters so you want to have all the things you need to in case you develop a blister I think everyone gets a blister at one point whether you have the right shoes or not so this was nice because you could cut up whatever size you need I don't remember what this stuff is called but it's like a sticky thing I, I don't remember what it's called but for blisters these were the kinds of tubes I had for my uh, toiletry. So I had a leave-in conditioner, I had regular conditioner, shampoo, I had the uh, Dr. Bronner's uh, soap. I had a bar of soap, a Dr. Bronner's bar of soap because that was nice. It doubled up for washing some of my clothing, like my underwear every day, and then obviously also my body, so that was nice. Um, I also had these little blister packs. This stuff, if you were like, if you're like, I don't need it or I don't know if I'll need it, you don't have to take it. You will find so many places along the way to buy these kinds of items. So if you don't take anything like that, that is okay. I don't remember if I had my little perfume. I think I took my amber oil. I don't remember. I think I did though. I had a little thing of Neosporin just in case. I've had an infection like before, like on a toe and it, you know anything like that always freaks me out so i didn't nothing happened this time but i liked having it um super natural when it comes to things but once in a while like if you need an antibiotic ointment this is nice so i had this travel size i didn't end up needing it but i think it's always good to have on hand just in case um a nail clipper just in case along the way you need to fix your nails i don't think that i did but um it was nice to have i did take a little tiny mascara and a little tiny like lip balm slash blush thing makeup was minimal i took these two items and a cover up a light cover up that had spf on it so very minimal obviously you can do without makeup i did these two small items i just wanted to put mascara on, on my <laughs> on my eyelashes some you know in the mornings you could do without for sure i initially did have this little baggie i ended up sending it back because everything just fits on the other one this was pretty unnecessary i did not need it i only found one but like earplugs for sure i had a guy give me one one day another pair because some nights you will be in these big dorms with people and everyone's snoring off key meaning like sometimes they're all in sync with the story and sometimes it's insane everyone is snoring and everyone has their own like cadence or i don't know and it's horrible and it can it can really disturb you and obviously again if you're not resting it, it just makes the next day more difficult so rest is important earplugs are absolutely necessary i took a full size um deodorant this is still the same one i had humble deodorant obviously you need that i had my face wash in a container like this my face wash doubled up as my moisturizer which because it's an oil base i ended up losing it at one point i was really sad i know exactly where i left it so that sucked um what did i end up doing for my face afterwards i don't remember that's okay so you want a face wash i had um a cbd oil like soothing serum i took it i used it on my neck like once i felt like it was a little stiff and maybe I used it on my knee one time. Obviously, I don't think this is an item that's necessary. I did also have like an essential oil, like rolly thingy. Not an essential item either, even essential oil. But I did like have it. I, I think I did keep it till the end. I did not send it back just because I liked having it. Sunglasses. I got these uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. Just like a really light pair. I really thought about taking my, my Ray-Bans. But, you know, something super light that maybe if you did, if you were to lose it, you wouldn't be too upset about. So glasses were obviously um, necessary. I had the hat, but some days were really bright and 
you want your glasses. Um, I really liked having the Swiss Army knife. I almost cut myself doing that right now. I had the scissors out. I had the scissors because I really liked being able, obviously, to cut this up. And in the beginning, I had a lot of issues with my feet. And so you'll spend some time bandaging up your feet and and covering up all the blisters so you can keep going on this trail you tough it out like you don't necessarily you know if your foot's hurting you still keep going most people do unless you have like infinite amount of time to finish um, or if your goal is to if your goal is to finish in a certain amount of time and you you you'll want to push through so but taking care of your feet is really important so having the swiss knife was really nice uh, another time i bought like a baguette and and a whole block of cheese and so i used the knife but more than anything i think the scissors were probably the most convenient thing i didn't end up having to use any of the other items on a swiss knife but it was a very convenient item to have and so i'm happy that i, I did take it um i had this hair clip that i used quite a bit if i wasn't wearing a beanie or a hat i did like using this in the evenings i also had some small hair ties which whatever i don't know where they are now items that i took initially that i did not end up needing i just want to show you so you guys know what type of person i am i did take a mala beads to pray on um i chant for meditation i did, ended up sending them back <laughs> i had sage and a, a little lighter i think i sent that back initially too and i had some crystals and ganesha this stuff you know you think you need you think you want but everything adds up and you really don't want your backpack to uh weigh that much and even though these items don't weigh that much i did send them back uh it just was not something that you that you need i had um I did take some tweezers. I don't regret taking that. I also had a little magnifying mirror, which I forgot to grab. Um, along the way, I did buy some magnesium. Uh, my foot was hurting quite a bit. And it was like a tendon on the top. So I bought some magnesium along the way. I think this would have been nice to have with you from jump. So if you're someone who likes your 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 muscles, your muscles tense up and you want something natural to help you relax, I think magnesium is something nice that you, you can have with you from the beginning. So I ended up buying that along the way. So this is everything. One item I didn't grab, I forgot to grab it, but I did take my Yeti 18 ounce uh, water bottle that has a lid, super heavy. It weighs a little bit over a pound. I liked it because I would mix my electrolytes so I took liquid IV, took lots of packets of that. I use that every single day, it was really nice. I don't know if it's necessary, but I know that to hydrate better, you do need electrolytes. Um, and so for me, it was nice. I never got headaches, I never got cramps or anything. Um, so I really liked having the liquid IV and I liked having that cup to mix it in. And I also took a lot of tea, since I'm a tea drinker, it was like a comfort thing for me and I really liked having my tea. Um, there's places along the way you could get tea and coffee. I liked having my own organic tea with me So I don't regret taking that cup um, is if you're someone who enjoys uh, Cool water some days might get really hot. Maybe you don't um, Your water so I had the water pack in the backpack, which I didn't show you guys But I did I would use it quite a bit obviously but water does weigh quite a bit and so I was, you know, initially I was filling it up all the way. Then I started to fill it up only halfway just to conserve weight. And then I had that water bottle. Sometimes, like, again, I would take my tea. Otherwise, it would be empty. And then I would just use it later whenever I wanted to drink the liquid IV hydration. And I don't know. That one is a toss-up. If I did it again, would I take it? I don't think so because as convenient and as much as i used it i mean i really did use it every single day it did weigh a lot and so i think in an effort to uh have your backpack weigh the least amount as possible you're probably better off not taking it but oh what i was gonna say if you like cold water so some days like the water might get quite warm if it's really hot outside but if you're someone who just like really wants to drink cooler water i met someone who had the bigger yeti and they were like no regrets like i love having my cool water any point of the day you find water all along the trail you never need to have too much on you because there are water fountains along the uh, along the way that you can easily find the last thing I want to show you guys that you'll have with you, you'll have your shell, which is your identifying marker. Everyone who has this on their backpack, you know you're walking El Camino. And so if you reckon, if you see someone with it, you know, you say Buen Camino because you know they're walking it, um, which is cool. So if you really build that camaraderie, that team. It's really cool. So you get this on your first day. 
at the Pilgrim's Office in St. John P. de Port, and you'll hang this on the outside of your backpack. So that's one item. Another item you'll pick up when you're there is your Pilgrim's Passport. It looks something like this. Oh, and this is not my, this is a blank one that someone gave me. <laughs> so I didn't grab the one with the stamps on it, but you'll get a Pilgrim's Passport, which every day you'll collect some stamps along the way to um, track where you've been and where you're going. And at the end, you'll need it if you want to get your Pilgrim certificate. I also had the planning, the stages for planning your walk each day. So it's a paper or something like this. You'll get this in St. John P. de Port as well. And lastly, you'll have the more detailed version. So that one shows you sort of the towns um, and the mileage. This one shows you all the different hostels, all the numbers, the uh, how many beds. Um, and so you really use this, as you can tell, for planning where, how far you're gonna walk. It tells you how many kilometers are between each town. And so you'll say, okay, well, I know that I wanna finish by this date. So today I wanna do 20 kilometers or 28. And you can see, okay, well, if I wanna do 28, what town does that put me at? And you'll do your research along the way. You'll hear, oh, that town is great, stay there. Oh, that town is great, stay at this specific hostel. Or, you're, or you'll hear like, that's not a great town. Maybe you don't wanna stay there. And so you'll decide, oh, I can walk two kilometers forward or I can stay one or two kilometers back and stay at the previous or the next town and adjust like that. So this is really nice. You'll get this there when you're at the Pilgrim's office. So these are items that you'll have with you at all times. Truly you want to, I mean, you really don't want to lose this. So I always have this in my fanny pack at all times. During the day, sometimes I wouldn't wear my fanny pack. I actually, if I had the shorts with the pocket, I would have my phone there and I would have the fanny pack in my backpack. And then it was more for the evenings. Okay, so I think that is everything. I don't think I'm missing everything because I was collecting all the items over the last couple of days. I said, like I said, I didn't share the Yeti cop um, and the, and the um, magnifying um, mirror that I have. But besides that, this was everything. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it's helpful for you when you're planning your trip. And I'm so excited for you guys to get on the road. It's definitely a journey of a lifetime. It, you meet so many wonderful people and everyone's experience is so incredibly unique and everything turns out quite perfectly to be honest um, everything unfolds as it should you usually you learn whatever lesson you know the universe uh, wants to show you so it's truly a magical experience and I'm excited you guys are doing your research and seeing what it is you need to prepare um, for the journey of course if you can make it more comfortable if you can have the the right backpack and the shoes it's just gonna make your journey more enjoyable you can't predict everything like I said I had incredibly bad experience with my feet because of boots I took and that just it's something I had to learn through experience um, again my sister tried to warn me to take hokas and I was in my mind I was like I need boots so some things you just can't exactly plan or prepare for, but there is a lot that you could do ahead of time to make your trip the most enjoyable possible um, so that you can have the best experience. So again, really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want links for any of the items that I mentioned or the names of specific items. Let me know, I'm happy to put those in the, in the section below the video. So check it out, subscribe. I'll be making lots of videos coming um, in the future. So stay tuned for more adventures. Thanks everyone for watching my very first video here on YouTube. Again, my name is Kat. I don't even know if I said that in the beginning, but Thank you all for being here. Take care. Buen camino.